So chapter 7 is about traps and seals. It's now, uh, in the chapter 6, we've seen the uh, core scale structures, right? The porosity and uh, permeability, and interfacial tension, contact angle, and relative permeability, right? And the production method too. But here, the traps and seals will be now in the geologic scale. It's a more uh, larger scale, maybe a kilometer scale. So the term trap was first applied to a hydrocarbon accumulation by Bolton. And trap is defined as a place where the oil and gas are barred from the further movement. So you sh uh, if this is the source rock, so as it gets compacted, it expels the hydrocarbon, right, the shell. Then this hydrocarbon will flow through the uh, carrier bed, and it's called the primary migration. Then this will migrate to the some structure and it gets accumulated, right? So then this is the, uh, this accumulation is in the trap. Right? So this is the trap structure. And to uh, prevent further migration to the upper layer, you need to have a seal or the cap rock, right? So to have the hydrocarbon accumulation, you need to have a source rock and the carrier bed and the trap and also the cap rock or seal. So here, I think we've talked about the source rock and the carrier bed in chapter five, right? And we'll, we will deal with the cap rock and the trap in this chapter, chapter six, chapter seven, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's, let's be familiar with the, um, some terminology. Uh, when you have this kind of anticlinal structure, anticlinal trap, here is the uh, crest. Oh, here is the crest. And the spill point is the lowest point in the trap that lies on the, on the horizontal contour. And closure is from the spill point to the crest. The vertical distance from crest to the spill plane. And bottom water is the zone immediately beneath the petroleum. And the edge zone is uh, outside of the uh, oil presence, huh? in the lateral direction. So here you have a bottom water, an edge water, and your water zone. In the vertical you have a gas cap, oil zone, and water zone. So here, the contact between gas and oil is C, gas and oil contact. And here, what? Oil and water contact, or WC. And beneath this oil and water contact, you don't have any oil. Huh? Okay. Uh, and then we've seen the uh, Already we've seen the, the pay, right? The productive reservoir interval within the trap. Gross pay, net pay, and gross pay and net pay. Um, here we have two separate accumulations with different OWC. In the upper pole, the net pay is less than the gross pay, and lower pole is the same. And this thickness may vary from one or two meters in Texas to several hundred meters in North Sea or and the Middle East. In Middle East, I have very thick pay. 
and uh, this anticlinal can be tilted. So then the closure is what? Is the crest, the vertical distance from the crest to the spear point, the spear plane. So in this case, spear pla uh, plane is around here, so that the closure will be around here, right? And social relief is here before it becomes the tilted. And, and oil and water contact and gas and oil, uh, oil contact and gas and water contact, I think you all know that. And evalu actual evaluation of these surfaces is essential for calculation of the reservoir. And their establishment is one of the main objectives of the well logging and testing. So, this oil and water contact, the location of these contacts can be done by drilling right? and the well loading. It can be done by well loading. Because even though you find the trap, it doesn't mean that it can have hydrocarbon. It may have hydrocarbon, it may not. So you have to drill the well right, to confirm the presence of the hydrocarbon. And, um, and the boundary between oil and gas and oil and water and these among these phases may be sharp or transitional. And abrupt fluid contact indicates a permeable reservoir and gra gradual contact or transitional contact indicate the low permeability with a high capillary pressure. Uh, tar mat. So you can find this tar mat very frequently in the trap. Uh, it, it is a layer of heavy oil immediately above the, uh, the bottom water. And tar mat are very important to identify and understand because they impede the uh, flow of water into the reservoir when petroleum is produced. So in the tar mat, do we have the pictures? So tarmed is at around here, tarmed. So you can frequently find this tarmed at the, uh, the water and oil contact. And the tarmed formed during the petroleum migration and long at not long after. Tarmed formed by absorption of asphaltines onto the clay and after that, by the thermal grade degradation of oil causing the precipitation of asphaltine, and this asphaltine is very sticky, so it blocks the, the pores of the rock and decreases the permeability. And the tilted fluid contact. A fluid contact in a trap are generally planar, but are now always horizontal. And identification of tilted fluid contact is essential for the correct evaluation of the reserve. And there are several causes for the tilted contact. And hydrodynamic flow, hydrodynamic flow of the bottom water. So if you have a flow of the water, then by the CPG force, you can be some displacement of the hydrocarbon from crest to the flank. And the existence of the cementation seal and tarmac followed by tilting, then uh, tarmac may decrease the permeability to such an extent. If the thread is tilted, the oil and water contact may be unable to adjust to, uh, to the new horizon. So initially, you have water and oil contact flat and horizontal like this, and you have a very low permeability region here. low K, so that after, because of the tectonic movement, it can be tilted, still this water contact doesn't get horizontal because of this low permeability trap. So finding this, the presence of the low permeability trap 
at the bottom of the oil and water contact is very important because uh, if you imagine the uh, pressure support by the water drive, if this is high permeability, then water will fill up the oil so that it can refill the pressure very easily, right? And it will increase the uh, production efficiency, but with this low permeability, it will block the water impede water invasion, so that the uh, pressure will just drop gradually. Uh, lithological cause also can cause the, um, the tilty basement, and like the shale and basement, which is very impermeable. So in this case, you know, after the tilted, the oil and water contact doesn't get horizontal. And for a trap to have integrity, it must be overlain by an effective seal or the cap rock. Any rock may act as a seal as long as it's impermeable. And seals will commonly be porous, but because of their fine grain size, have a very high capillary force that prevents prevent the fluid flow. And seals may in fact be petroleum saturated, but they must not permit the vertical migration of petroleum from the track. And shale is common seal, or the commonly is the cap rock. Also the salt stone, the evaporite, the effective seal. Shale may selectively trap oil while permitting the overall migration of the gas. It's called the gas chimney. So sometimes the shale has some cracks or the high pump zone. This is the high K. So that allows the fluid flow, including the gas. And this can be detected in the uh, geophysical survey. And so the gas migrates through the, uh, the seal and these include the uh, compressible Darcy flow of the free gas and transport of the dissolved gas will be diffusive transport through the oral saturated pore stages. So when you have the uh, gas flow, it could be just a free gas, the gas bubble coming up. And you have a gas, uh, dissolved gas, so you have a water flow Contain the yolk gas. And also, so this is advective flow. And you can have just a pure diffusion. Pure diffusion is what? It's uh, from higher concentration to lower concentration, you have movement of the molecules. Huh? That's what the diffusive transport. Um, gas chimney is very interesting structure in terms of the uh, geology. Um, you have a thermogenic or biogenically produced the methane or propane or the ethane, those kind of a hydrocarbon gas. And because the Concentration here, the gas concentration is very high. They would like to diffuse out, right? So it can be transported by water or it can just molecule by itself, it can diffuse out. And when the gas is coming up and float, and when the pressure and temperature condition is correct, then it forms the gas hydrate, right? And also breaking through the hydrate zone, so this is the hydrate. So then it can flow to the, uh, the ocean and expose to, to the atmosphere. Okay. So here are the, uh, the, the picture of the free gas sitting. So people also call the gas chimney or the gas seat. And 
And uh, you can find this gas chimney using uh, seismic survey because gas has very low permeability, uh, no, low velocity, right? So when you have the saturated sediment, PL velocity is very large, could be uh, 1,700 meter per second, more than 1,500 meter per second, right? But when the sediment is unsaturated with free gas, then PL velocity just drops less than 1,000, right? So also the gas attenuates the P wave so that you have a much lower amplitude coming up. So here, when you have a gas chimney, so amplitude surrounding area is large, but the, the area that you have a free gas, you have a very low amplitude, so it looks like a white region. It's called a blanking. So here, also you can see that other area it has a strong reflection, but here in this, through the gas flow channel, you have blanking area. Gas chimney. Also, same. So you can see the blank zone here. And also, because of the velocity difference, you have a, a pull up, arrival time pull up. So it looks like this. Gas chimney. And uh, the traps can classify into four kinds of traps. Uh, first is the uh, structural traps, the trap whose geometry is formed by a tectonic process, and one whose upper boundary has been made concave by some local deformation such as folding and faulting. And diaper trap is caused, a trap caused by diaper where the salt and mud have been moved over and doomed the overlying strata. And stratigraphic trap whose geometry is formed by change in lithology is by the uh, diagenetic process. The stratigraphic traps. And hydrodynamic traps where the traps where the downward movement of the water prevents the further upward movement of the oil, thus trapping the oil. Mm. But these traps are there, and also the combination traps. Mm. So um, from the next class, we'll uh, briefly review the structural trap and the diap diaper trap, and stratigraphic trap, and the hydrodynamic trap. Then I think that will be all for the chapter seven. <laughs>